Hello everyone and welcome to episode four of the altered book uh, journal that we're working on. And I'm calling this one Use Your Wings. I will put a link down below for the entire series so you can watch it from the beginning if you haven't started already. But today what I'm working on is um, in the last uh, video I mentioned I had done a, a bunch of painted papers again and I wanted to maybe work on doing a master board because I thought I could use it in my journal and then also if I like how they turn out offer them as um, part of a digital kit that I'm going to put together for this project. Before I got too far along on my master board I decided I needed to kind of start with how my process works um, so that I don't use up all the papers that I had already painted um, in case I wanted to use them while they were intact in the journal. Um, because for master boards, I'm gonna start cutting things up and collaging and that kind of thing. So the first step that I did, I ended up uh, with roughly 60-ish um, papers that I had hand painted. And some of them were gonna be for sure embellishments. Um, the first thing I did to kind of see what I needed for cards was I took an inventory of my the, the pages that I had and pockets that I had kind of laid out. So I covered how I prepared the inside of my book in um, the last video. So I basically went through my pages and decided what my maximum size pocket could be a uh, uh, card for the pockets that I had made and kind of which direction they were going to go because some of my um, jelly prints, the way they pulled, they were, I was using a plate that was uh, longer and narrow for some. And so those could be nice sized journaling cards, but some of them looked better to go in one way versus the other way. So I took uh, kind of the inventory. So I had uh, three sizes that would be maybe side um, entry cards and then two sizes that were going to end up being top entry cards. And then I just kind of went through my book and did little tick marks till I could find decide how many minimum I was going to need. And then obviously I want smaller ones to go in with that and that kind of thing. But this just gave me a rough idea of what I needed for each spread. So then I took my papers and I kind of took the whole pile um, and just started going through and pulling ones that I thought could color coordinate together for a particular spread. So for example, I took these four and thought, okay, well, these all could work for this area. Now I may or may not use all of these and I'm not sure how I'm gonna use them, but I just wanted to have set them aside so that I didn't tear them up for my collages. So I did that one. I'm gonna just go through so you can see how I put things together. I, you know, I get comments a lot um, from people who feel uh, maybe not so confident in, in pulling their color palettes and, you know, their spreads together. So really how I approached it was just, I put things into my eye, you know, everybody's, it's all um, subjective. So it's just, that's what I thought look, could look okay together. Um, and then I did this one and, and you can kind of tell I've pulled, you know, two, they have the same colors or some of this lighter pink color. Um, and then, you know, I want some contrast. I want contrast and pattern and color. So some light and some dark and, um, just kind of a mix of pattern. So, and I had this one and this worked because of the dark and then a little bit of the turquoise color, um, and then these two, I just kind of liked how those two went together. So then I pulled these two. So, you know, I just kind of went through and like I said, they may or may not end up in this kind of grouping, but I thought those all could go together. And then I may end up shuffling them a little bit. You know, there are some that work in multiple um, groupings, but you can kind of see where my brain was working. Um, this had kind of some of this more fuchsia colors in it for these. And then I didn't have very many that had kind of this bright pink in it. So these kind of worked together to pull uh, that bright pink in. 
And then these were all kind of some muted ones, um, but I thought, you know, that it's kind of a, and then I threw in that odd dark one, which not even the whole part of the paper might work, you know, it might just be part of it. So I kind of had some favorites and then I kind of had some that came together at the end, you know, the last ones. So again, just another grouping. And some I love more than others, but you know, I wanted to make sure that I had enough for my book. I am gonna be pulling in some other papers probably, um, just because this is also dark and moody and busy. Um, maybe I want some calmness in there. And um, so I'm gonna maybe uh, use some papers from the uh, maps and ledgers paper pack that I used in my last little project. Those. And then these are pretty dark. So that's what I pulled aside that I didn't want to tear up right now. Uh, but I wanted to, again, show you how I approached the master board. So I'm new to all this, you know, and apparently I, I may or may not know all the correct terms and what things are because I'm just learning from other people who are doing videos. So what I understood a master board to be is you kind of create a collage. This is really kind of just step one and two. Um, you co you create something, a design, a collage, um, mixed media art, whatever it is, and then that is your master, and you use that, you, you copy that either at a copy place or at home, however you want to do it, and then you use those copies for your projects, whatever, and they can be whatever they are. In this case, I am gonna, if I end up liking any of these at the end, I'm going to scan them and then make them part of possibly that digital kit that I'm putting together. But I think because my, this actual journal is going to be original artwork in it, if I end up using all my original papers and not just the copies of these, then I want to actually cut up my master board and make some different things with it. So that's my intention, we'll see how it goes. Um, but so far I have just taken the last few papers that I ended up not putting, because they were already in scraps, some of them, um, I ended up not putting them uh, aside for my book. So I just um, tore those up. I also added in some um, old book page that just had a little bit different of a color. Um, I have some light here, but I ended up not using any of that, but I had this kind of aged one. I ended up using some of that and then some uh, aged music paper too. These are all old um, on their own. I did not um, age them myself. So I ended up using some of that in here and it's really a fun thing to do and I'm sorry I did not do it on camera, um, but I really just wanted to relax and kind of have fun and I wasn't sure I didn't want the stress or, you know, thinking I was being watched, I guess, on camera. I just wanted to have a little fun last night. So um, I took just, you know, this again is a, a, a copy of something that I was tossing in the garbage. So I just kind of use um, any kind of recycled eight and a half by 11 paper that I have lying around. So that's what I used. And then you can use any kind of glue. You can use Mod Podge. I used a glue stick just because it was handy. Um, and I just, you know, went to town and tore and, you know, tried not to cut anything, just tear it uh, and then just layer it on. So it, this is not, you know, rocket science. There's not a really a rhyme or reason. In fact, I did some intentionally, maybe not as balanced as I would so that I can show you how I fix things that I end up not liking because I think that's all kind of a, a part of it if you're just learning. So I guess as far as just layout and balance sort of thing is when you lay out your pieces, maybe try to go different directions, um, different sizes. Uh, don't put all the dark in one spot, you know, try to balance out the color so that you have light in different spots. If you're going to use the same pattern, which I kind of like to repeat it at least once, just try to have them be apart from each other. You know, these are all came from the same. Um, so it's just, you know, little pieces, big pieces. So I start out with some of the bigger pieces, ones that already have an interesting tear that I want on top. I'll, you know, glue those 
after. I'll put maybe the, some of the larger ones down first. And then when you end up li with little holes or things, you can fill them up with small bits, um, with washi tape, which I'm gonna do on somewhere. I might have just a little piece of white showing, um, that sort of thing. So once you end up kind of this first step of just gluing all your papers down, then you want to just trim all the edges and you can use a guillotine trimmer to do that or you can just do it with scissors. So I'm just gonna trim this down. This is what I ended up with. Now I wanted to show this because um, I've done four total and I don't know if on camera you'll be able to see, but I've taken these to a step two already. And if you notice, this is a lot darker and bolder uh, than this one. There's kind of a softness to this one. Um, and even to these, you know, you don't see any little white edges and they're just kind of like a smoky effect. So I'm gonna show you what I did to do this step on this new one that I'm just starting. So the first thing I wanted to do for me because I don't like white areas. This one's not too bad, but what I did, and I, I'm kind of limited on what supplies I have here, but I took some Distress Ink, and this one is in uh, Crackling Campfire, because I just wanted maybe a little color where there wasn't color. And I don't care if it's too matchy-matchy. You know, it's kind of maybe in the end gonna go with my my thing. So I just kind of here and there where I wanted um, added a little bit of color. So I used some uh, Crackling Campfire and then I have some, let's see, what is it that I have here? I have some peeled paint. So I used kind of in the ones that I've done so far, I've kind of just used those two colors just to kind of maybe um, bump up the color where I feel like it's a little too um, too much white or solid color. So just, you know, nothing too strategic about it. I'm just wanting to kind of add a layer to my grunginess. Um, I have some other colors, but I ended up just, I think on those, the ones I've already done, I ended up just using these two. So I'm just gonna kind of here and there hit some of these areas that just, it makes it makes some of those vast areas look a little smaller, kind of so that everything's more to the same scale. So that's kind of the first thing that I did. Um, and any of these steps you can eliminate, you know, it's just me playing, I guess. So the next thing that I did to kind of get that smoky effect was to take just a little um, plain white gesso and I'm just gonna do it right here on my map to the side. And um, then a little water, a brush and a little water. And just really water down and it's kind of good to have a baby wipe handy in case you do too much. So I just, I'm kind of just going maybe where two colors change and just kind of giving it that little smokiness just to kind of soften the edges and kind of blend them a little bit, just so nothing's very harsh. So where, wherever you kind of just feel like it's, there's too much contrast. And I'm just using my finger to blend it in. So if you, if you do too much somewhere, you just take a little off with your, with your baby wipe, maybe get the edges. I'm a brand new at all this. And I guess, I, you know, it's not like I can teach you doing these videos, but I guess I wanna share them because I'm so new at it. Um, and I know a lot of people have commented about, you know, they really wanna try things, but they are just afraid to. But you don't, you know, <laughs> There's no judgment, you know, this, you're only judging yourself. So if it doesn't turn out, you cover it up and do something else, but you're never gonna learn it if you don't try it. And I just figure, you know, I'll keep working on it until I like it. So I'm not a, you know, I'm not a teacher of this. I'm not a professional of this. I'm just showing you that anybody, cause if I'm not an artist and I can do this, 
then anybody can do it and they should just, you know, just try. So it's a lot of fun, especially if it does turn out and you end up liking it, you know. Um, I don't think if you do your, you know, put down colors that you like, you know, and, and pattern and things that you like that appeal to you, I don't think that you cannot like it, you know. Um, you just, my whole thing, I used to do a lot of like recycled furniture and, you know, that kind of stuff. And my thing was always keep just adding layers. I think a lot of times when you don't like something, it's because it's too flat. There's just not enough dimension and interest to it that it, you just need more layers. So I always have just been a keep adding layers until you like it. So you can see how that kind of just tone down the harshness of all the lines just a little bit. We're going to do a lot more to it. So that was just, you know, one step, the first step to making this more interesting than just a Franken paper sort of thing. So the next thing that I think I might want to do, I'm going to let these dry a little bit and come back and maybe add a few more things and a few more layers to it. So um, I'll check back with you here in just a few minutes after these have dried. Okay, these are dry. I hope I stay in frame because I'm sitting down now. Um, but one of the other things that I do, and I don't know if it's necessary, I just like to work on a flat surface. And I've once I've added water to something, uh, it can kind of get wobbly and um, curled up, you know, that kind of thing. So I use my iron on a uh, press and cut uh, mat so I don't ruin my my ironing board. And then I usually put a piece of paper to protect because there may be glue on this still or paint. And I just kind of iron them flat, just so I'm starting out with a somewhat flat surface. So I decided that the next step that I wanted to take was to maybe um, add some tissues, thin kind of things, a layer on top of this, maybe some washi tape, and maybe do a little stamping and a little stenciling. Those are, I think, going to be my next steps. So I think first I want to do the tissue paper one um, layer. And so I'm just going to clean my brush here and use some matte medium. And I have a variety of things that I had brought with me. So I've got um, some of the currency that I had done. I don't know that all the colors of what I had left will work. But I did have in my scrap box some printed out pieces to some scraps. So I might be able to find some of those. There's one. And just kind of add those as just a different element to, to collage with that's not part of these painted papers that I did. So let's see what I have here. That one I can stamp on maybe. Oh, some of this might be kind of fun, too, for a texture. These are those little uh, strips from the spiral-bound books that when I painted those and saved those, I have a project in mind to use those, but I may use a couple just to for texture. Let's see, what else? There's a bit of that that I used in the cover. My little teeny scraps from my, my, oh, there's a piece printed on regular paper. When I did my Bohemian travel journal, I had used some of that currency, so I thought I might find some pieces in there too. Kind of like the tissue. Okay, it's probably enough. A few of those odd things, and then some uh, tea bag. That's kind of just the color I thought looks nice with this, and might be just a nice little added if I can get it wrinkly on there. And then I had some of those deli paper ones that I think those could look look good on there too, to bring in some more color. Okay, so let's just get going here so I can do some of these quick and I'm not really gonna you know think too much about it I just kind of want to glue some things down for another layer so 
So maybe here. And I'm just using some uh, Liquitex acrylic matte medium to stick these down.
all dry and pretty dry. They probably should dry overnight. I don't want to get them too wet again with the next step. Um, so I'm thinking what I'm going to do is um, scan these in like they are because they're backgrounds. Um, they're not finished yet, but I'm thinking I might want to see what they look like at this point. I'm half tempted. Um, I was going to add some washi tape, some stamping, and some stenciling. And I'm half tempted to wait on a couple of them to do that um, until they're cut down into whatever I'm going to use them for, cards or whatever, because that way I might want the stencil or the stamp to be a focal point or, you know, to kind of help it coordinate with whatever page I'm putting it on. So I may do that with a couple. I'm half tempted to choose a couple, um, maybe my two least favorite ones, and then finish them up a little bit more and then maybe tone them down, age them out and have them be my inside front and book, back book covers. So I might do that. So I want to think about that and get these scanned in before I move on to the next step. So the next video, I'm not sure what it will be. It will be either working on these some more, um, but I kind of have a feeling it might just get going on that, um, on that book. So uh, thank you for watching. I hope if you like it, you'll give me a thumbs up. Um, don't be afraid to go out and play. So get out your um, scraps and um, start gluing them down and making some master boards to use for cards and embellishments in your journal. So have a great rest of your day. Now go make something. Bye.